It's time for the ultimate keyboard showdown, the grand match to determine the rightful owner of the title best keyboard ever. The IBM Model F, the IBM Model M. Fight! First, that intro notwithstanding, I recognize that everybody has their own tastes in keyboards. But among those who cherish the tactile clicky variety, the Model F and Model M have always been at the top of the heap. The Model F was included with the very first IBM PC in 1981, while the Model M was an option offered with the later XT and AT before becoming standard on the PS2 line in 1987. The Model M has been in continuous production ever since, yes, still to this day. Now, there have been a lot of variants of both the M and F. I'm focusing most on the standard desktop versions because I think they're the most useful to the most people and are true contenders for the crown of best all-around keyboard. But just know that this isn't an exhaustive deep dive. I will mention a couple of the major contenders, though. When I was growing up through the 80s and 90s, the Model M was considered the mother of all keyboards, the one that birthed our modern standards and the one with the best overall typing experience. But over the past decade or so, I've seen the Model F get rediscovered by the keyboard aficionado community. And yes, as with any subject, there is such a thing. Many of them swear that it's actually the Model F that provides the best key feel of all. I remember typing on a Model F in the early 80s, and I own another one again now. It feels just as I remember. I also own several Model Ms, and I've owned others in the past. I say it's time to do a direct comparison and pick a winner from the perspective of using one as a daily driver. I'm going to look at four things, typing feel, layout, build quality, and convenience. I'll also throw in a brief discussion about in-key rollover. Number one, typing feel. The Model F defined the clicky typing feel, being the first clicky keyboard in a mass market personal computer. It's the one that everyone, including IBM with the Model M, has copied ever since. Its key feel is light yet responsive and buttery smooth, like a well-greased sled through winter snow. This typing feel comes courtesy of the proprietary buckling spring technology clacking directly onto a hard, capacitive PCB. One thing about the Model F is that the space bar is very stiff and inconsistent with the feel of the rest of the keyboard. This was fixed on the Model M. The Model M does away with the PCB in favor of a conductive membrane. Now, so-called membrane keyboards used to have a bad name, but it's not the membrane that's the problem with those, but the rubber domes that often come with it. The Model M, well, most Model Ms, use the same buckling spring technology as the Model F, but with a slightly smaller flipper hitting a flexible membrane rather than a hard PCB. It also seems to have a very slightly higher actuation force for each key, about 5 grams different from what I've read. This slightly changes the typing feel in a very subtle way. The higher typing force brought the Model M more in line with other keyboards of the time, many of which were very stiff, and that may have just been more what people were used to. I think it's the inclusion of a rubber mat and slightly higher force on the Model M that causes the slight difference in feel more than the membrane. In fact, you can take that mat out and the Model M feels even more similar to a Model F. The two keyboards also sound a bit different. The Model F has a much higher pitched ping to it. Although both keyboards are pretty musical. And of course they're both loud enough to wake the neighbors. Winner, the Model F. But they both feel great, just slightly different. Number two, layout. The Model F debuted at a time when there really wasn't a standard keyboard layout, and all those confounding new computer keys just seemed to confuse and befuddle keyboard designers everywhere. Just look at the crime against humanity that Apple committed with the arrow keys, for example. The Model F put everything together in a way as good as any at the time, but IBM went back to the drawing board with the Model M and literally set the standard for keyboard layouts for decades to come. We're still using the Model M layout. The Model M introduced the separate navigation and numerical areas, put the function keys at the top, and organized the Shift, Alt, and Control keys in a logical way that we're still all familiar with. Now, IBM didn't just jump straight from the original Model F to the Model M's layout. The Model F AT was kind of an intermediate step that fixed a lot of the original Model F's layout weirdness, but it didn't quite go all the way. The Model F AT is also hard to find and usually stupidly expensive these days, so there's that too. 
but if you don't care about the separate nav and numpad, it may be worth seeking out. Now, if you want to really geek out, there's also the Model F4704, the version created for IBM's finance terminal of the same name. There were several of these, but the one I think is most interesting is the 77 key version, which has a mostly traditional yet condensed layout that some people really like. But you've got a better chance of being struck by lightning than finding a used one of these. I'll have more info on an alternative later. Winner! Among standard desktop keyboards, the Model M. Though the Model FAT or 77 key 4704 might be enough of a middle ground for some. Number 3. Design and Build Quality the Model F and Model M are both extremely heavy and robust feeling keyboards, although at this stage they both have their issues. The original Model F features a metal base and a thick painted plastic top. Yes, it is plastic, and yes, it is painted. The single piece keycaps are also quite thick, and they're die sublimated with thick heavy legends in a single color, though oddly mine have begun to smear a bit. Internally, it has a thick metal backplate, a layer of foam, the PCB, a metal front plate, and individual flippers and barrels for every key. Repairs on the Model F can be tricky because of its complicated construction, and even just removing and replacing the spacebar is an exercise in frustration without disassembly of the entire keyboard. I somewhat stupidly removed my spacebar to clean it, only to find that I had to drill out part of the posts and use dental floss as a kind of improvised rescue tether to get the stabilizer back in place. The foam layer inside the Model F is also prone to breaking down, as mine has, and most probably need to be replaced. I've left mine alone for now, because it's not really worth taking the keyboard apart unless you absolutely have to. But if I ever do take mine apart, that foam will absolutely need to go. And it's not like IBM's still making replacement Model F foam, so you need to find and cut your own. The later Model F AT does away with the metal base in favor of thick plastic. IBM continued that with the Model M, which has a fully plastic case, although it's not painted, meaning there's nothing to flake or wear off on the case of a Model M. It's not ABS though, so it also doesn't yellow. In fact, my Model F is yellower than my Model M, though it was probably made that way. Internally, the Model M has a similar metal backplate, although this got thinner over the years, held in place with dozens of plastic rivets. These have a tendency to fall off over time, which can mush up the typing feel. And if yours suffers from this, the fix is to do the infamous bolt mod. I will say that none of my Model Ms have needed a bolt mod. My 1985 AT Model M has only lost a few rivets, and my 1996 Lexmark has lost none. Though it's something I've been meaning to do just for my channel for a while. But not needing to is the reason it's taken me so long to get around to it. I know you guys are asking, but I've got plenty of other stuff that's actually broken to worry about. The Model M also has a plastic front plate over its membrane with integrated pre-molded barrels, which sounds worse than the Model F, but is actually a much simpler, more logical design that's easier to work with. The Model M also does away with the Model F's foam layer in favor of more durable plastic sheets. Some people may wonder whether you can swap the keycaps between the two keyboards, and the answer is yes, they are interchangeable. Model M keycaps are a tiny bit taller because they're two-piece, but they fit in the barrels exactly the same and they work just fine. They're also die sublimated PBT just like the Model F's, and consequently don't yellow or show wear, although early versions of the Model M had two or even three colors on some keycaps. Winner! It's a tie! I may get some grief from Model F fans over this, but I've worked on both keyboards and it's impossible for me to say one's more reliable or easier to work on than the other. And fully disassembling either keyboard requires destroying and remaking something. The Model F will need new foam, the Model M new rivets. Number 4. Convenience. My Model F came with a very short, permanently attached cord. In fact, my 1984 Model F cord is clearly shorter than even the cords shown in early IBM PC advertisements. Early versions of the Model M, though, came with a 9-foot detachable cord. This was one of the enhanced keyboard's enhancements. The cord on the Model M did change over time, though, and my 1996 Lexmark comes with an attached straight cord, so your mileage may vary. Model M's are available with either 5-pin DIN or PS2 connectors and support AT or PS2 protocols. If your PC still has a PS2 port, you can easily connect these to that computer with at most a passive cable adapter. For USB though, you're going to need an active converter. 
New Model M's by Unicomp support USB natively, but I reviewed one of those and didn't really find it on par with the originals, so I think it's worth getting whatever converter you might need for an original version. With a Model F, you're going to need an active converter no matter what, since these use the original PC and XT protocol and won't even work on a PS2 port, let alone USB. Active or passive, I'll let you figure out which is more expensive. The PC-AT interface made status lights possible, meaning most Model M's have them and most Model F's don't. XT-based Model M's lack them, so be careful of that, and AT-based Model F's do have them, which is again another feather in that keyboard's cap. And while this isn't as important as it once was, Model M's have two-piece keycaps that you can swap around as needed. Winner, the Model M. Now let's talk about N-key rollover. Some people make a big deal out of this in keyboard reviews. This is the ability for a keyboard to detect N number of key presses at once, N being any number. So with N-key rollover, you can mash the keys on your keyboard and it'll register every one. The Model F has N-key rollover, the Model M does not. So if you care about N-key rollover, this is a clear win for the Model F and you may as well skip the rest of this section. The Model M has two key rollover, meaning it will register at least two simultaneous key presses plus modifier keys, although it's usually more like four or five depending on the specific keys you press and where they are in the circuit. This easily covers any mistakes you might make while typing or any overlap you might have, say in a game moving up and then to the right. I'm of the opinion that at least for most people, N-key rollover is a meaningless specification. I never even saw it referenced until the early 2000s, and didn't know my Model M didn't have it until even later than that. I've been playing games and doing other advanced stuff all that time, too. It's kind of like having a pickup truck with six wheels. I mean, for certain tasks, maybe you need that? But most of us just don't. But if you do need to do this, then the Model F is really your only choice. Maybe you're trying to catch every key press your cat makes while sleeping on your keyboard on the off chance he turns out an award-winning novel. I don't know. What I think most people really care about when talking about N-key rollover is ghosting, or the tendency of a keyboard to produce phantom letters when you press too many keys. Neither the Model F nor the Model M does this, despite the Model M not having N-key rollover. Overall winner! Both of these are great keyboards, and whenever I'm sitting near either one of them, I find myself randomly hitting keys just to feel it. But put a gun to my head, and I'm going to pick the Model M. It's got a standard layout, it's easier to work on, it's cheaper, easier to obtain, has a longer cord with slightly more modern connectors, and it feels 95% as good to type on as a Model F. Don't forget that whether or not the Model M was intended to cut costs internally, this was considered an upgrade by both IBM and consumers at the time. That's why they called it the Enhanced Keyboard. It was only available as a higher cost option on XT's and AT's initially, and it wasn't available at all on the original PC at the time. Those buyers were stuck with the original Model F, which was considered outdated at the time. Now back to the Model F 4704 for a second. You'll remember that I liked its layout, and it also has the bonus of being the only one of these keyboards with an all-metal case. And while you may as well start buying lotto tickets if you want to find one used, you can actually buy a brand new one for literally just a few more days. But be prepared to pay for it, and orders end this month. I'd love to have one of these to try out, but honestly, they're a little rich for my blood. A dark horse is the Model FAT, though it's a little bit of a unicorn and still suffers from some of the problems of the Model FXT. But it's kind of an in-between model that offers a little from column A and a little from column B. Honestly, even though I don't own one now, my experience with the Model FXT and what I know of the layout of the AT version tells me I could definitely live with one as an everyday keyboard, and I'm sure I'd love it. But I'd still probably like the Model M a tiny bit better overall, just for its layout. But let me stress that I love both the Model F and Model M, and in terms of raw typing feel, it is true that the Model F is unsurpassed. Well, except for the spacebar. It's just not quite as practical or easy to live with as the Model M, and given that the Model M feels almost as good, that makes the difference. The Model M is the true owner of the title Best Keyboard Ever.